Hi everyone, I'm Basil Nilamra, FR Tutor. In this video, I'm going to debrief chapter number two of ACCA Study Hub, which is Conceptual Framework. This is pretty much a theory chapter. In this video, I'll be explaining conceptual framework topic. Then I will be discussing QSAS as well as OT revision questions in a few upcoming videos as well. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel as I'll be uploading more videos on conceptual framework. So what exactly is conceptual framework? Conceptual framework is a set of principles on which accounting standards are formulated and framed. So why there should be conceptual framework? As I told, it's a set of principles on the basis of which accounting standards are framed by International Accounting Standards Board. In the practical world, it is very difficult to have an accounting standard for each and every aspect. For example, there is no accounting standard for cryptocurrency. There are certain guidance on how cryptocurrency should be accounted. IASB says that cryptocurrency should be accounted as an intangible asset. But IAS 38 intangible asset does not state cryptocurrency as an intangible asset. How will you account for gift vouchers? How will you account for gift cards? There are so many things happening in the practical world nowadays by which not every transactions and events can be regulated or recorded using accounting standards. So here is where conceptual framework comes into picture. Conceptual framework helps the accountants and the financial statement preparers to use these principles to formulate their own accounting policies, accounting treatment for transactions and events where there is no accounting standard. So the advantage of conceptual framework is it helps the accounting accountants and the financial statement preparers to come with a treatment for transactions and events which there is no accounting standards. It also helps auditors to verify if the accountants have prepared financial statement properly when there is no accounting standard. So it helps when there is no accounting standards, how to account, how to audit a transaction and events when there is no accounting standards. Now, the six principles on which conceptual framework or any accounting standards are framed is one, fundamental principles, and second one, enhancing principles. We have relevance and faithful representation in fundamental principles. Comparability, verifiability, timeliness, and understandability in enhancing principles. Those who have already learned financial accounting might have learned this particular topics already. But the difference between financial accounting and financial reporting is that in financial accounting, they just expect you to apply or lead, have only knowledge regarding the definition. Financial accounting focuses on, do you know what is the definition of relevance? Do you know what is the definition of faithful representation? Do you know what is the definition of comparability, verifiability, timeliness, understandability? That is what financial accounting paper test. And they will also ask you which of the following is a fundamental principle or which of the following is not a fundamental principle or which of the following is an enhancing characteristics or which of the following is not an enhancing characteristics all that is basic acca financial accounting paper at acca financial reporting the questions will be a bit more challenging they will give you a scenario uh, or a, an accounting treatment and they will ask you which principle is being applied in this particular treatment so basically there are around uh, almost 20 accounting standards they can pick out any treatment that you have learned in this 20 accounting standards and ask you which 
fundamental principle or which enhancing principle or which characteristics is applied in this given accounting treatment. So the questions will be a bit tricky. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I will be explaining all the quizzes and all the OT revision cases from ACCS Study Hub in detail in the upcoming few videos. So the first principle that we are going to discuss is relevance. So what exactly is relevance? It says that an information is relevant to users of financial statement if it has the ability to influence economic decision of users and it is provided timely. So I normally uh, take this example. I teach in an institute known as Capens, which is Kerala's first platinum approved learning provider. It's a pretty much small organization. And let's compare Capens with Reliance Industries Limited. You are a shareholder of Reliance Industries Limited. You have invested dollar ten thousand in Reliance Industries Limited. You also have invested same dollar ten thousand in Capen School of Accountancy and Management. And there was a fruit both in Reliance Industries Limited and Capens. The amount of fraud is dollar hundred thousand in Reliance Industries Limited as well as Capens. There's a fraud of hundred thousand. So my question is that. Which fraud will you consider as very important? Which fraud will cause you a tension? Or which fraud will make you anxious? So the question was very simple. You are an investor in Reliance Industries Limited. You have invested dollar 10,000 in Reliance Industries Limited. You also have invested $10,000 in Kaplan School of Accountancy and Management and ACC tuition provider. And in Reliance Industries Limited, there was a fraud of $100,000. And in Kaplan School of Accountancy and Management, there was a fraud of $100,000. So same amount invested, same amount of fraud. Which fraud will cause you anxious? No doubt, Kaplan School of Accountancy and Management fraud will make you anxious or tensed. Why is that? Because $100,000 is a significant amount for Kaplan School of Accountancy and Management. But as far as Reliance Industries Limited is concerned, it is not a relevant information at all. It's not a big amount for Reliance Industries Limited at all. So which is relevant information? The Capens information is relevant to you. So when will we say information is relevant? And information is relevant if it has the ability to influence the economic decision of users and it should be provided in timely. Now, what is this importance? How is this conceptual framework? How does this help accountants? How does this help auditors to frame up their own accounting treatment when there is no accounting standard? Remember, I told you the one of the important features of conceptual framework, one of the advantage of conceptual framework is that conceptual framework, there are six principles in conceptual framework, and this six principles helps the accountants, help the preparers of financial statement, helps the auditors to come up with a tra accounting treatment when there is no accounting standard. So how does this relevance principle help, in, help accountants to come up with their own accounting treatment? Very simple. If the accountant believes that this information is very important to shareholders, because it will influence their economic decision, then they will have to record that transaction. They will have to record an asset, or they will have to record the liability, or they will have to record the equity, expense, or income. Or at least they will have to disclose this in notes to financial statement and provide this information to shareholders because it is relevant, because it has the ability to influence the economic decision of users. So just remember that. Now, there is one more word which is always related to relevance. That word related to relevance principle is materiality. And what is materiality? Information is material if its omission or misstatement could influence the decision of users. Again, we are discussing about the decision of users, influence the economic decision of users. If that information is not provided to shareholders, if that information is omitted, or if there's a mistake in that information, it will definitely affect the economic decision of users. Then it is material. Material is part of relevance principles. Now, faithful representation. What do you mean by faithful representation? Faithful representation means transaction should be presented 
in accordance with their economic substance and economic reality, not based on their legal form. So that means we have to give more importance to the substance and economic reality, not to their legal form. A very good example of this accounting standard is IFRS 16 leases. In lease, you might have learned that not short-term lease, there's a lease known as not short-term lease. And in not short-term lease, the asset is recorded in the books of lessee or user. There's a legal owner. The lessee is the legal owner, but the asset is not recorded in the books of lesser, not in the books of owner, not in the books of legal owner. It is recorded in the books of lessee. Why? Because there's a definition of asset. The asset means, there's a definition for asset. The definition of asset is that it's an economic resource controlled by the entity. Economic resource means it creates economic benefit. So you know that the in case of a not short-term lease, the lease is, period is more than 12 months. So all the economic benefit of using this asset fall to the lessee. So asset should be recorded in the books of lessee based on their economic reality. So faithful representation means transaction should be recorded in accordance with their substance and economic reality, not on their legal form. Now, to be faithful representation, three criteria should be met. One, completeness. Second one, neutrality. And third one, free from error. What do you mean by completeness? Completeness means the information provided in financial statements or in notes to financial statement should be complete. It should contain all the necessary description and explanation so that shareholders will be able to understand this. Normally, all these descriptions and explanations are given in notes to financial statement. Neutrality means the information should be free from error or sorry, free from fraud or bias. And it should also be free from error. So to be a faithful representation, three criteria has to be met. One is completeness. Second one is neutrality, which means free from bias or fraud. And third one is free from error. And remember, faithful representation means the transactions are recorded in accordance with their substance and their economic reality, not merely on their legal basis. Make a note of that because when we practice the QSS as well as OT revision cases from practice platform, We'll be seeing faithful representation so many times. So make a note of this and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And comparability. The next principle is comparability. So comparability means information should be comparable. It should be comparable with previous year. It should also be comparable with industry average. So if you have to compare with previous year, it should be consistently applied. If you have to compare with industry average, it must be disclosed. Now, for example, listen very carefully. If current year is straight line method, sorry, previous year is straight line method, current year also straight line method should be followed. But remember, it can be changed. Consistency does not mean uniformity. Normally, it means uniformity, but not exactly. That means if current year is previous year is straight line method, current year also we have to follow straight line method, but it doesn't mean uniformity. You might have already learned this in chapter number four of ACCA Study Hub IAS 8, changes in accounting policy, accounting estimate and prior period error. We can change accounting policy. We can change accounting estimate if certain criteria are met. So that means Uniform consistency does not mean uniformity. Remember that as well. And disclosure is essential for comparing with industry average. You cannot, you might have learned this in interpretation of financial statement. A company that revalue its asset will have revaluation surplus. A company follow cost model will not have revaluation surplus. And this will affect ROC, net asset turnover, gearing ratio, making it incomparable. So how will we know that an organization is following fair value model? 
How will we know that an organization is following cost model? That will be in notes to financial statement disclosures. So disclosures helps the entities to compare with industry average or one company with another. So comparability should be with previous year and with industry average. Previous year consistency helps to compare and industry average disclosures helps to compare. Next one is verifiability. The shareholders should be able to verify their financial statements directly or indirectly. There are two types of verifiability. One is direct verification, which is technical, not practical, practically possible. And second one is indirect verification. What do you mean by direct verification? Direct verification means verifying an amount through direct observation. For example, counting cash. If a shareholder wants to verify cash, shareholder will have to go there and count the cash. That is direct verification. Indirect verification is by using formulas. A shareholder can test whether the value is correct or not. Example, recalculating inventory using FIFO method or recalculating depreciation is another example for indirect verification. Because every organization in their notes to financial statement will disclose a cost, will disclose residual value, will also disclose useful life. Will also disclose useful life. So if this information is obtained by shareholder from notes to financial statement, the shareholders will be able to recalculate depreciation by themselves cost minus residual value divided by useful life and compare it in a financial statement, verify whether the same depreciation is appearing in financial statement. That is known as indirect verification. By using certain formulas, shareholders will be able to verify the figures given in financial statement. Then timeliness. Timeliness means information should be provided to shareholders on a timely basis. So these are the six principles on which conceptual framework is based on i hope you have understood the six principles i'll be uploading a few more videos on conceptual framework so please do subscribe to this channel all the best for your examination